How are you, my friends? This uh, video is presenting questions 1 to 14, which I will call Group A, from the 70 all the exams review questions for the complete algebra course, lectures 1 to 39. So let's say question number one, let's perform the indicated operations. I can see here an expression. I have to add and subtract. So I have to factor each denominator and find the LCD. So when I factor each one, this one x minus three, x plus three, this one is a perfect squared, x plus three all squared. So the LCD will be each uh, factor raised to the highest power, x plus three squared, x minus three. Now I have to change each denominator here so that all the denominators are the same. So I multiply up and down the first one by x minus three, x plus three. The second one up and down, I multiply by x plus three, you know the story. And then this one I multiply up and down by x minus three, because I have to get the same as the LCD here. Then I multiply in the numerator, x squared minus nine here, x plus three here, x minus three. Then when I add, I get x squared minus three over x minus three, x plus three all squared, leave it. The whole fraction is the answer. Here you cannot do anything because there is no equation here, only expression. Just factoring here, we factor the uh, expression completely. For sure to factor, we have to do the common factor first. So the method here, we have a common factor, 2x for sure. Take 2x and then inside we have x power 6 minus 7x cubed minus 8. This one is a trinomial, so it will be x cubed plus 1, x cubed minus 8. This one is the sum of two cubes, you know the formula. It will be x plus one, x squared minus x plus one. And this one is a difference of two cubes, x minus two, x squared plus two, x plus four. Just review the formulas, please. This one is the easy question. We have a function x squared plus three. Find f of one minus h minus f of one plus h over f of zero. So we have to replace x by these values and then simplify it. So the first one becomes one minus h squared plus three. I put the big bracket here after the minus, one plus h squared plus three, down in the denominator f of zero will be zero squared plus three. Just to, to mention here that there's a formula, one minus h, don't forget the formula squared. So this is like, remember the formula, a minus b all squared, 1 minus 2h plus a squared. There's another formula here inside. 1 plus 2h plus h squared. When you simplify everything, you get minus 4h over 3. Now, given the two functions f and g, f is 2x squared plus 5, g of x is 2x plus m. If the graph of f circle g has y-intercept 23, find the product of all values of the m. So let's find first F circle G. F circle G means I replace all the function G, which is two X plus M inside the F. So it will be two, see this is two, all this squared plus five. This one, remember Y intercept, that means X is equal to zero. So Y I put here 23, in the X I put zero here. Two times zero, zero plus M, so M squared, so two, m squared, bring five on the other side. So you get m squared is equal to nine. So m will be plus or minus three, find the product, it will be minus nine. If the dimensions of a rectangle are given by three over pi centimeters and two pi centimeters. So this is a rectangle. Its area is A. P is the parameter of a square of length side of x centimeter. Find x if the sum of a and p is equal to 58. So here we have two shapes. We have the rectangle. See the rectangle here, L and W. 
So one is two pi, one is three over pi. See, three over pi and two pi. All right. And then the square, we have the parameter is four X. So the sum of the area, area you multiply three over pi times two pi and the parameter of the square is 4x. So this becomes six plus 4x is equal 58. 4x is equal 52 divided by four, x will be 13 centimeters. Now, find the number of rational zeros of the polynomial function. We have two x power four minus four x cubed plus three x squared plus nine x. There is a little trick here. We need the number of rational zeros. Let's take a common factor here, x first. So we take a common factor x, then we have the first rational zero is x equals zero here. So we leave it. Now we go inside, we have cube. We cannot factor this. Then we have to use p over q. This is p over q. So we have to check by synthetic division. We know inside there are three zeros. So I check, you can check any number. You can check one minus one half, three minus three, nine. I check minus one because of the time. Two comes down, minus two, that would be minus six. Uh, six is, plus three is nine. So the remainder is zero. So minus one is a zero. So let's check now the quotient. Two x squared minus six x plus nine. See, the discriminant here is negative. That means complex zeros. So the question says, find the number of rational zeros. The answer is two. X equals zero is a rational zero. X equals minus one is a rational zeros. So their number is two. Find the X intercept of the circle whose center is the vertex of the parabola. F of X is equal to X squared minus 24x plus 69, and passing through the origin. So we need x-intercept. There is a circle, and there is, the center is the vertex. See, we have a parabola. You know the, the formula for the vertex, parabola h and k. h will be minus b over 2a, which is 6 here. We find k, f of 6, which will be, replace 6 in the function, you get minus 3. So this number here, six minus three is the vertex. Now this vertex is the center, you see? So that's the center here. And the, the circle is passing through the origin. So this number and the origin will be the radius. So you find the distance between the origin and the vertex, it will be square root of 45. So find the equation of the circle now, x minus six squared plus y plus three squared is equal 45 because there is r squared in the formula. Now x intercept let y equal zero, put here y zero. Simplify the equation, you get x minus six squared is equal 36. Take the square root of both sides. So x will be zero or 12. This is the x intercept of the circle, zero or 12. Now we have a graph here given, give a rule for the piecewise function, find the domain and range. So this is a straight line, this is a constant, this is another straight line. So the rule means we have to find the function itself. So f of x will be, see this is easy, less than minus one, this is a minus one here. x less than minus one, this is the straight line minus x. Between minus one and one open, it is a constant at Two. Greater than one, see it's open here, it will be f of x is equal to x. Now we can check the points here. The domain will be minus infinity two one, because all this is closed. Union one to infinity one is not included in the domain, as you can see. And the range closed from one up to infinity on the y where the graph of this polynomial is above the x. Now by looking at the function p, we see that the real zeros are the x-intercept, 0, uh, 3, and minus 2. 
So we put in the graph here, 0, 3, and minus 2. We see it is tangent to the x-axis at minus 2 because this multiplicity is even, crossing at 0 and at 3. The degree is 6 because that's 3 plus 2 plus 1, and the leading coefficient is negative, so down to the right, down to the left. All right, this is the behavior here. So where is the graph? See the question, where is the graph? Above the x, above the x, from 0 open to 3 open, only from 0 to 3 open. If 1 plus i is the 0 of this function, x cubed minus x squared minus i x squared minus 9x plus 9 plus 9i, find the product of the other zeros. So 1 plus i is a 0. That means if we make it synthetic by 1 plus i or we replace 1 plus i in the function, the remainder should be 0. So now let's see here. We have, we have a little trick here. You see x squared minus x squared here, minus x squared minus i x squared. So you have to take x squared common factor. So we put minus one minus i. Here you put minus nine, here nine plus nine i. And then we divide by one plus i. Bring one down, multiply one plus i, zero. Multiply zero minus nine. See the remainder is zero. We know the remainder is zero because it says one plus i is the zero of the function. So we take the quotient x squared minus nine, we factor normal real numbers, x plus three, x minus three. We need the product of the other zeros, so the answer is minus nine. If A, B, and C, D are the points of the intersection of the line y equals one, and the circle whose center is three, zero, and radius square root of five, find A plus B plus C plus D. So we have a line y equals one, which is horizontal line, we have a circle. Let's find the equation of the circle. Just imagine there is a circle. You know, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So this is the circle here. Simple, easy equation. x minus 3 squared plus y squared is equal to 5. Now this circle intersects the line y equals 1, which is horizontal line. So I put directly 1 in the circle where the y is replaced by 1. So I get 1 squared. Take 1 on the other side. We have x minus 3 squared is equal to 4. Take the square root of both sides. So x will be 5 and 1. So these are the red points. These are the points of the intersection. The first one, 1, 1. And the second is 5, 1. So add a plus b plus c plus d. The answer is 8. Find the value of this expression. Now we have, this one is easy. This one is easy. Only here we have two 0.3 dash means 2.3333333. We have to change it to fraction, rational number, and then we subtract minus one, and then we square it, then multiply by three over four, and this one are easy numbers to do. So let's say 2.3 dash minus one will be 1.3 dash. Let's convert this to fraction. So x will be, let x will be 1.3333. All right, let's call it equation A. Multiply by 10 because we have only one number repeated. So 13.33. So let's say subtract B minus A. So 10x minus x, here see 9x. And this 13.3 minus 1.3, it will be 12. So x will be 12 over 9, divided by 3, 4 over 3. So the first term here, 3 over 4 times 4 over 3 squared. So 3 over 4 times 16 over 9. So you cancel the 3, you cancel the 4. So it's 4 over 3, the first term. Now the first term, the last term is easy, minus, minus one over two to the power minus three. So we invert and cube it. This one minus one over three minus two. We invert and square it. See, this is the formula, a over b to the minus n, b over a to the power n. Please be careful, remember this. 
So we have 4 over 3, this is minus 8, and this is a plus 9. So that's 1, 7 over 3 is the answer. Nice question. Now, find k if the graph of this rational function, f of x, has horizontal asymptote 12 and no vertical. So this is a rational function. We have a horizontal asymptote is 12. You know, when the degrees are the same, the horizontal asymptote will be the leading coefficient in the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. So k squared over 3 is 12 given. So k squared will be 36, k will be plus or minus 6. Now, if k is equal to 6, rejected because the denominator will be 3x squared minus 6. We have two vertical asymptotes. And in the question, there is the condition no vertical. So for no vertical, the denominator should be 3x squared plus 6. Now here we cannot factor in real numbers. So k will be minus 6 in this question number 13. Now let's look at question 14, little change. Find all vertical asymptotes of this rational function. It has horizontal asymptote 12. So again, we say k squared over 3 is equal to 12. So k squared will be 36, k plus or minus 6. If k is equal to minus 6, rejected. Because the denominator will be 3x squared plus 6. So this is just the opposite of question 13. No vertical. But we need vertical. So k should be 6. So the denominator becomes 3x squared minus 6. Now take 6, this should be 0. The denominator is equal to 0 to find the vertical asymptotes. So x squared will be 2, x will be plus or minus square root of 2. Two vertical asymptotes. Thank you for watching group A of the 70 all the exams review questions. I wish I can see you in group B. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.